Joe was so angry with Amy, she could have hurt her. And even after she calmed down, Joe wouldn't forgive Amy or accept her apology. But that night when they were all skating, she wished she had because Amy went through a thin spot on the ice. I'll never forget the expression on Joe's face, one that was never there before, when she said, oh, mother, I wouldn't forgive Amy, and if Laurie hadn't saved her, it might have been too late. I think forever after that, especially when it snowed or there was skating on the pond, Joe remembered my saying, master your temper, but should you fail, never let the sun set on your anger. <laughs> And uh, you look like the sporting type, you old thing. Oh, and they come in colors. You wouldn't believe the colors. For instance, here's your avocado, and here's your smoke blue heather. Oh, and here we have tiger. Tiger really screams you, old boy. Oh, and here we have your olive gold. Don't you just love olive gold? And antique gold. And bold gold is really great. And look, it's got a reinforced heel. It gives you up to ten times more wear. Yeah, oh, and it feels just like cashmere. Oh, and lemon peel. You're gonna die for... Oh, that's not lemon peel. Oh, and here we have your Miss Green is here well, somewhere. Which is I think my I'll head. just have a pair of black, please. Which length, sport, crew, mid, or over the calf? Ah, oh, man, the eternal dreamer, a fighter for a fresh, unrumpled bed each night, now has victory in his hands. It's over. It's over. It's over. Nightly nightmare of wrinkled sheets is over. Now, Burlington never, never iron sheets are here. Without ever ironing, they're fresh and smooth to start with, and they come back each night fresh and smooth again. It's what every man's been dreaming of. <laughs> and every woman. Burlington never, never iron sheets. No bed should be without them. 
Burlington Sheets, just one part of Burlington Industries. If it's anything to do with fabric, we do it at Burlington. And we do more of it than anyone in the world. Spring is my favorite season. It seems to be the beginning of so many new and wonderful things. Well, that spring the father was away from us is a perfect example. For Meg, it was the beginning of romance. Oh, she was quite a young lady then, and naturally dreamed of a young man coming into her life, a rich and handsome stranger. Well, he arrived. Of course, he was neither rich nor a stranger. He was Laurie's tutor, John Brooke, who until then had considered Meg a child. Well, one glorious April afternoon, Meg was teaching her young children how to make flower garlands. And Brooke came along, acting as though he had never met her before. He read poetry to her in German, and then absentmindedly walked away with one of her gloves. But that's the sort of thing that happens in the spring. It wasn't long till Meg was lost in love. And that spring, 
It was also a new beginning for Beth. Remember how she often cried because she didn't have a good piano? Well, Laurie's grandfather, old Mr. Lawrence, changed that forever when he had a beautiful new piano delivered for her right in our living room. When Beth discovered that, she was so overjoyed and overwhelmed that she forgot how formal Mr. Lawrence had always been and threw her arms around his neck. I've never seen either of them so happy. Two music lovers had a very special friendship. And later that spring, Jo finished writing her story and took it to our local newspaper. She didn't tell anyone at the time, just in case the editor didn't want to publish it. But her dearest wish came true. He did ask to print her story in his paper.